The following program is brought to you by Gizop Productions. Oh shit, what's up, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to an all new episode of the Totally SSN Wrestling Podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Porter, we're, we're back to cover the week that was professional wrestling, ladies and gentlemen, um, and what a fucking week it was, holy shit, we have a new WWE champion, if you haven't heard, Daniel Bryan, congratulations, Washington Zone, Daniel Bryan. For winning that WWE Championship this week. Apparently Vince McMahon changed his mind over the weekend. Uh, he wanted to shake things up a little bit. So here we are. New WWE Champion. Dream match on Horizon on Sunday. Holy shit guys. Uh, also the unfortunate injury to Becky Lynch. Which may be a blessing in disguise. So we will get to that here. Momentarily on the Totally Necessary Wrestling Podcast. So I hope you've all had a good week. Let's go ahead and jump right into the week that was professional motherfucking wrestling. Gotta get the fuck in there, you know. If we're not saying fuck on the internet, guys, we're not we're not living to our potential, guys. We're not living to our potential. So WWE Monday Night Raw kicked off with a Raw Tag Team Battle Royal. Um, basically, uh, it's you know so they they kick off to determine who's going to be the captain of the Raw side of things in regards to the tag team um, elimination match. Uh, this coming Sunday, uh, which is taking place on the pre-show. By the way, guys, we're not fucking watching that. I'm not spending six hours this coming Sunday watching the fucking Survivor Series. We will tune in for the four-hour edition, the main card, as they as as one would say. So uh, that's how Raw kicked off to try and determine um, who the captain would be. Uh, but ultimately, Braun Strowman interrupted and basically grabbed a fucking mic uh, to talk to the WWE universe. Um, Basically calling out, you know, Baron Corbin, right? He basically just called out Baron Corbin, basically calling him a little fucking bitch and telling him to get his fucking ass out to the fucking ring right now. So this actually prompted Stephanie McMahon to actually come out and uh, address Braun Strowman. And you know how Stephanie does it. You know, she just fucking grabs whomever it is and just grabs him by the balls and fucking brings him down. I don't know if she really did that here. I mean, I didn't necessarily hate this segment. I thought it was, you know, outside of them just really not giving a fuck about the the, the raw tag team uh, scene. You know, it just, it was a... Um, it was good to see Stephanie, I guess, you know, back on WWE television. I mean, like... I don't want to see her necessarily every week, but, you know, seeing her here in to, you know, step up to fucking Braun Strowman and shit, it's interesting. So, um, yeah, basically Braun Strowman wants, uh, either he wants Baron Corbin and he also wants, uh, I think they, yeah, he wants another title match against fucking, uh, Brock Lesnar, which I guess, you know, I don't, I don't know when the fuck they're going to do that. They're going to do at the Royal Rumble. I don't really think, I don't really think, uh, Braun Strowman's winning the Royal Rumble this year, guys. I think we're going to be seeing um, somebody else getting that push there. But nonetheless, we're going to see that down the line eventually. Um, so, yeah, Stephanie had some, you know, she had some, you know, counter offers in, in regards to Braun Strowman, basically saying, okay, okay, we'll give you that championship match and I'll give you fucking Baron Corbin. And she also fucking signed, or, you know, told uh, they're going to get Baron Corbin to fucking sign off on, you know, basically Baron, Baron Braun Strowman not being held liable for the situation that will occur, um, you know, sh- very shortly. Uh, the, 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 the stipulation was, though, that Braun Strowman couldn't touch Baron Corbin until after the Survivor Series. So, oh, shit, there's the fucking, there's your, uh, there's your little twist right there, you know, which... Stephanie McMahon and apparently Braun Strowman came to an agreement in regards to uh, this coming being on Team Raw this coming Sunday. There, you gotta imagine some something's going to implode, shit's going to go down, and I'm pretty sure Baron Corbin is going to get his ass kicked come this coming Sunday at the fucking Survivor Series, ladies and gentlemen. This um, led to Ember Moon taking on motherfucking Tamina. Unfortunately, I did not fucking see this this past Monday, as I do not, uh, as I have the Hulu fucking version of it, obviously. So no, I, 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 you know, watching the Hulu version of Monday Night Raw, uh, we did not see 
Ember Moon and Tamina. So um, apparently it was rated a solid C fucking match. So it was a very average match at fucking best here. Uh, so we did see, though, that Tamina did defeat Moon, which is pretty fucking predictable. Obviously, they're building up fucking Nia Jax and Tamina as uh, this fucking super Samoan tag team. I mean, if they introduce those tag titles, like they're fucking been rumored for the past like year, Tamina and, and uh, Tamina and fucking uh, Nia, uh, Nia Jax. Yeah, I'm like losing my fucking train of thought, motherfucker. Shit. It's how fucking boring this shit is. <laughs> it's so fucking boring. It's just like, I don't, why am I even talking about it? It's like, Porter, what the fuck are you doing? You're fucking talking about Nia Jax and Tamina, which I've been on very on record of like, I don't like fucking Nia Jax. I am just, I, I, I can't stand her shit. And we'll get to her later as well. Uh, so we did see Corey uh, Graves interviewing Seth Rollins. I thought that the Corey Graves and Seth Rollins were kind of lame in the interview. Um, it is what it is. It led to uh, Seth Rollins finally talking to Dean Ambrose. It were, in Dean Ambrose, I should say, talking to Seth Rollins, in fact, because you know it was Dean Ambrose who was quiet for all those weeks. Uh, basically, Ambrose basically more or less said that he's not remorseful for his actions. Uh, he used to think the shield made him fucking strong, but not anymore. It made him fucking weak. So the burden, uh, you know, it, it, the burden of watching uh, Rollins back uh, made him weak. Apparently, I don't fucking know, guys. It's not like I'm reading a fucking transcript here. Some shit. I'm reading some shitty ass fucking internet fucking, you know, internet fucking uh, report for people who don't have cable or don't watch it. You know, other in other ways that you're able to watch it on the internet. Um, so yeah, I mean, it was cool, it's cool to see Dean Ambrose next to a fucking flaming, uh, his car right next to a fucking flaming barrel, uh, yeah, he, he ultimately burned his fucking, uh, his shield fucking vest, uh, so we're gonna see Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose, I don't know when we're gonna see that first match, I mean, one would assume TLC, um, I don't know, man, I mean, again, I'm, I'm vested in the storyline, so we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens moving forward and when we're going to see the first match between Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose. I don't think that's carrying in the, in the fucking mania, but, you know, I guess that's a solid winter fucking program. I don't know, guys. I don't know. Monday Night Raw was pretty fucking boring, I guess. I don't know. Also, I mean, this was a fun segment. And then the next segment was really fun, too. It was Drew McIntyre, Dolph Ziggler uh, talking shit to the WWE Universe. Um, so basically Drew McIntyre just fucking tore it up, dude. Like this guy is WWE main eventer all the fucking way, dude. Like he's ready, dude. Like if we're talking like, you know, Braun Strowman not winning the fucking, uh, Royal Rumble this year, dude, I, I, I solidly think that, um, that Drew McIntyre is a, is a possible candidate to win that Royal Rumble, uh, out there in Phoenix, Arizona this year. So Drew McIntyre, man, I've, I, you know, I've been very, uh, forthright in my comments about how I'm a fan of Drew McIntyre and I like to and this was just a great continuation of his character and just really putting him out there as man he is he if there's anybody that's going to be um, taking advantage of this whole Roman Reigns situation it's fucking Drew McIntyre man he's benefiting quite a lot even though a lot would say that you know he was on that he was on that path anyway but I think now it's kind of more evident than it has been in the last couple months so it's definitely it's definitely showing shit out there so uh, this did lead to finn balor coming out and dude a vicious fucking headbutt from fucking drew mcintyre uh drew mcintyre basically made fun of fucking finn balor for being short and shit and just like what the fuck drew you stupid bitch <laughs> can make fun of short people i i'm offended i'm a fucking offended wwe i am a fucking short man and as a short man fuck you so <laughs> Uh, yeah, we ultimately did see Finn Balor taking out Dolph Ziggler. Uh, dude, I thought the fucking match between Finn Balor and Dolph Ziggler was a fun fucking match, dude. So I thought, you know, if this was probably your best match of the fucking night, like, and again, like, not quite remember exactly what else happened the rest of the fucking night. Um, <laughs> you know, this is definitely was my match of the night uh, so far, at least my segment of the night, I would say. So I enjoyed uh, seeing Drew McIntyre on Monday Night Raw. Um, another thing I did not see due to the fact of the Hulu version of Raw cutting this out, we saw the Riot Squad addressing the WWE Universe, which I kind of figured something was cut out because they said the shit about Natalia later on. Um, yeah, definitely I stand by that fucking going back, dude. I stand by that Drew McIntyre fucking, or the Dolph Ziggler-Finn Balor match being the actual match of the night. 
uh, for the show and whatnot. Um, so yeah, we saw fucking the Riot Squad addressing the WWE Universe again, not seeing it. It got a fucking solid B, apparently, but it looks more or less like they just beat the shit out of Natalia, and it was all about fucking, you know, healing up fucking Ruby Riot. You know, it's about to add sunglasses, motherfucker, Ruby Riot. Why'd you fucking, why'd you fucking do that, you dumb bitch? You know, so it's more or less that. So, um, I'm not really interested in it. I, I thought the angle last week when they did a fucking in England, uh, fucking sucked donkey nuts. So, I, I'm not really you know enjoying it here either so i'm kind of you know thank you hulu for cutting this shit out of my fucking feed man i have to fucking watch that um so yeah then another thing i I did not see which again okay so they had the tag team battle royal uh numero dos right so the second battle royal of the fucking evening and Anybody that's watching the hulu version didn't fucking see the second one so honestly like i i didn't even realize that there was a fucking uh, a second take until I read it online, like later, uh, you know, later that day. And it's just kind of funny. <laughs> it's just kind of funny because like they just totally left those people. Like there's no consideration for anything like that, right? And, and again, you know, it kind of goes back to it. Like who really cares about this fucking battle royal? Like none of, do any of these tag teams fucking matter? No, they do not fucking matter. Um, ultimately, Bobby Roode and Chad Gable beat. Okay, so yeah, the Ascension, the B team, the Revival revival okay he's slater and rhino that's what that's what it fucking was um yeah it's sad to see the revival being treated that way man but i mean they're still on tv so you're still getting fucking whatever dude (laughs) um i don't know dude it was pretty fucking bad so we saw brock lesnar returning to uh to fucking monday night raw here uh basically i don't know exactly what this was all about regarding but um we basically i mean saw paul Heyman call out aj styles and then from there, Jinder Mahal and the Singh brothers basically came out and jobbed out to fucking Brock Lesnar. Um, yeah, I mean, it's more or less the same. It's the same shtick that we've been seeing this past, like, fucking, you know, five, six, seven years or whatever, however long it's been. I mean, it's been he's been back, like, since, like, what, 2012? It was 2012 when Brock Lesnar came back, so that's, like, fucking six years. Shit, it's going on seven years. That's crazy. You know, I don't know. Dude's looking in fucking shape. Dude's looking in fucking shape. Looks like he's going to be fucking rocking and rolling in the ufc apparently this the deal that he signed is uh he's he he's able to do whatever he wants basically for whatever or however long they have him contracted on the short-term contract which i assume is through wrestlemania um fuck dude that's it's a fucking that man has so much i bet that man has so much fucking money dude it's like ridiculous dude you paid all this money just to fucking do very minimal fucking w i mean it's all i don't know whatever i don't whatever dude what the fuck ever it's like brock lesnar so i mean again more or less the same that's we've seen this shit before so uh obviously at the moment that when this uh, happened that we we still were under the impression that brock lesnar was going to be facing off against aj styles which again i it was a match i was actually kind of looking forward to so um we did see elias taking on bobby lashley more fucking bobby lashley what the, i don't know about what the glute thing is um i don't know man it's kind of shitty they definitely have to- uh, brought back, uh, you know, uh, reined in Leo Rush on the mic out there. He's definitely not doing what he had been doing weeks prior, which is probably a good thing. Uh, they're introducing the sunglasses into the mix. Um, it's a very quick match. Obviously, Elias isn't necessarily your your um, your uh, best wrestler in the fucking ring. Uh, but nonetheless, though, this was actually a match to see who was going to be the. Um, yeah, it was going to be the uh, final person on the on the fucking uh, Survivor Series tag team. Yeah, which Lashley, Bobby Lashley is going to be in the fucking five on five fucking uh, uh, Survivor Series fucking match, which most likely I assume is going to main event the fucking show. I would assume. If not, it's going to be Daniel Bryan and fucking fucking <laughs> uh, Brock Lesnar. I don't know. We'll see what happens, guys. Uh, we saw in the main event there, which was Alexa Bliss, but supposedly revealing the final member of the Survivor Series team. Um, Ba- it turned out to be Bailey and Sasha Banks uh, facing off into a no contest. Um, totally uh, was a, I don't know, man. I mean, it was kind of, I mean, she just ended up, I mean, they were just trying to, it's an all heel team for Raw. So, I mean, obviously they were just fucking over the two baby faces, which I guess is kind of cool. They were just basically kind of fucking with them and shit. So, you know, I guess I, I guess I can entertain that as a, you know, being somewhat fun. Uh, but ultimately, yeah, we saw the heels. Um, we, we, you know, beat the shit out of fucking, uh, 
Sasha Banks and fucking Bailey, and then we saw Becky Lynch attacking fucking Ronda Rousey in the fucking back locker room. Uh, this led to like I, I again, man. I think Becky Lynch is like the like she when she says she's the man, like she's the fucking man. Like we're talking like I, I, I honestly feel with the like where she is, like this is like main event. Like this is like unprecedented regarding like a a woman. Like the the I mean you have Sable as a somewhat of a comparison in a sense, but like not necessarily because Sable was all about sex and it was all about you know all you know it was the, it was the sex appeal and whatnot the Attitude Era, but with Becky Lynch man like she's like a stone like she's like Stone Cold Steve Austin she's like you know breaking out on that mainstream level like she's breaking in like she's becoming you know she's going you know pulling a daniel bryan a cm punk for more you know recent comparisons like she's gonna she's she's like like she could legitimately main event a house show and legitimately main event a fucking any pay-per-view like what what like this is unprecedented it's amazing i don't know i'm just i'm and we ultimately saw what happened with Becky Lynch coming out, addressing the Raw locker room, and just like, you know, basically about ready to fucking take them all on, dude. And then ultimately led to the SmackDown women coming out. Um, it was awesome, dude. This was like, dude, this was so fucking badass. Like, cause they've done this, they've done this shit with the men before, you know, they've done this shit with the men, but like, this was, this was something else, man. This was definitely something else, man. With Becky, like I said, dude, Becky Lynch is like breaking through onto that other end, dude. Um, you know, we talk about how we were very excited for, uh, this Ronda Rousey, Becky Lynch main event, and they've been sending some fucking nasty fucking messages, dude. They've been sending some nasty messages back and forth to each other, man. It's fucking awesome, man. They're like, they're building this fucking fight. You know, it reminds me of like that stone cold fucking Mike Tyson shit. And you know, that's what they were trying to do with this whole Stephanie McMahon fucking versus Ronda Rousey shit. Like trying to reignite that McMahon fucking uh you know austin fucking rivalry but like this truly feels like that like that 1998 feeling you know you don't know what's gonna happen type feeling because like i just remember as a kid when when steve austin came out and mike tyson just like they pushed each other and or you know austin pushing there's like that all that melee dude it was just like oh my gosh like you know you wanted to see stone cold fight mike tyson at that point it's like i don't want to see fucking stone cold fight Shawn michaels i want to see stone cold steve austin fight fucking mike tyson like you know that's what i want to fucking see here and i feel i feel like that same feeling is like you know a 13 year old kid you know, watching this Ronda Rousey, Becky Lynch storyline, in which was, you know, it was kind of disappointing in the sense that, you know, they, they got so much out of it. Well, it's amazing, I should say, that like they got so much out of this, you know, and just it, it was, a, it was a steady build though with Becky Lynch though. It's just like every, like every little moment, it keeps topping it. Like you know, ever since SummerSlam, for some reason, like, and you can argue it went back to like you know, Money in the Bank because like she was fucking. I think it started at Money in the Bank. You know, honestly, when she was like in that fucking like she was gonna everybody kind of thought she was gonna win there for a second that crowd erupted dude it showed man that people like fucking becky lynch dude people like fucking becky lynch and then from there yeah you know then we get to SummerSlam and the heel turn and just that crowd was just fucking all for becky dude that was a fucking very and ever since dude just it's 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 just she's been steamrolling dude she wins the title from fucking you know charlotte and then she you know defends it against charlotte you know successfully several times you know minus the fucking disqualification in fucking australia and they end that feud on the evolution pay-per-view here just recently with that last woman standing match in which is that was just like that was just a classic match like that was their you know austin you know austin hart wrestlemania 13 moment in my opinion you know what i mean kind of like that's kind of what i felt like it was like a five-star match in my opinion best match of the night obviously um you know and just now we're seeing going into survivor series we're seeing becky lynch taking on you know ronda rousey and it's just like that hype is there dude the hype is fucking there and it's real dude like it's fucking real it's fucking real and we see what happens on monday night and ultimately with nia jack's fucking you know throwing um a very non-worked punch uh against and hitting becky lynch directly in the face basically like breaking her nose breaking like her orbital bone and uh giving her a very severe succussion now albeit we you know especially in today's day and age with the, the way 
the concussion protocol is it you know we 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 can pray that she's you know you know will make a full recovery from this but it like i said earlier this may be a blessing in disguise in the sense that like now they have the opportunity to take this feud and build it that much more and take it to wrestlemania 35 and truly let this be the main event of wrestlemania 35 the fucking press they're gonna get for this shit dude like i have a feel. i don't know i don't know because like like i said you know like it, it just keeps building they keep building off these um these jab these verbal jabs that they keep giving out these last two weeks it just like it built so quick it was like a fucking just like lighting a fire dude's like boom you know how fucking fast a fire is dude i mean it's just amazing and and just after what happened this week and then ultimately what we saw on smackdown with becky lynch announcing um you know charlotte as the replacement we i i if like everybody else man i'm sure we're all reading it dude i saw what ronda rousey said and then i saw what fucking becky lynch said like ronda rousey's like oh you can't take a fake punt or you can't take a you know real punch da 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 and then fucking uh becky lynch just murders her dude this straight fucking murder just fucking drops it like fucking yeah i got fucking i got fucked up but I'm still fighting, bitch. I'm still fucking fighting. You got fucked up and you went and hid for 11 months. Oh, fucking murder, dude. Like, oh, this is the, this is like, this is like, dude, they, if they don't take this to WrestleMania 35, then fuck WWE, dude. Straight up fuck WWE. If they don't fucking know what they have, they, then fuck them, dude. They don't know shit, dude. They don't know fucking shit. So dude amazing ending to monday night raw um amazing so we 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 went into smackdown the next night we actually did kick it off with a rare appearance of paul Heyman on um on fucking smackdown here um because they because initially they addressed the you know the becky lynch thing um you know because obviously it was announced the next night is when we found out that Becky Lynch wouldn't be able to compete this coming Sunday at Survivor Series, so we were going to find out her eventual replacement. Um, but we kicked off the show with AJ Styles coming out, and this, again, dude, like, everything got shaken up that next night, dude. Like, we had this amazing fucking ending to Monday Night Raw going into SmackDown, and then SmackDown just being this crazy, like, this craziness, dude. It just felt like everything mattered that night, you know? It just felt like everything was major, that's a dude that's a great feeling dude like again going back i feel like i'm 13 years old watching some of this shit dude like this is when wrestling is at its best dude like this is when it's at its best dude we we suffer you know so many weeks out of the year for these specific moments this is why you can't stop watching wrestling um so ultimately uh paul Heyman interrupts aj styles they're going back and forth uh paul Heyman baits daniel bryan to come out which we left off smackdown last week with brandon daniel bryan uh just destroying everybody just like walking off in fucking fits of anger and shit and it was fucking great it was like this is fucking awesome and then we fast forward to this week he's just like i want to you know it's just like i like that whole line that daniel bryan does you know i'm gonna punch you in the fucking face and shit so uh this led to a huge fucking fucking brawl between aj styles and daniel bryan um it continued into the back of the fucking lock and the back of the fucking locker room um ultimately it was announced that aj styles would defend his wwe championship tonight against daniel fucking bryan amazing i'm like right there i'm like holy fucking shit like major shit's gonna like why are they doing this what's going on like holy shit like oh my gosh you know because i'm you know again daniel bryan being uh, from washington state here where i fucking live motherfuckers uh dude dude top dude you know he's that he's in that top echelon of my favorite wrestlers of all time motherfuckers so you know that was gonna be happening later in the night we did see jeff hardy though open up against andre andrade cian almas um this was a pretty fun match here again i'm a huge fan of jeff hardy too um andrade cian almas i'm a real big fan of his too i thought this was a pretty fucking fun match it was it was you know you know, it was a TV match, but in Hardy ultimately defeated Almas, which since Hardy took the fucking pinfall last week, 
uh, to Samoa Joe. This is kind of, you know, saving face, you know. Um, hopefully they'll do something with Sion. You know, hopefully they'll do something with him. Because uh, I think he's amazing in the fucking ring, dude. I think him and fucking Selena Vega, dude, are a fucking awesome tandem. And, dude, I, I want to see more Andrade Cien Almas in 2019, guys. Like, I want to see that guy fucking progress. And hopefully he fucking will. We'll fucking see. Um, so this ultimately led to the back uh, backstage vignette with, um, you know, The Miz, more or less. Because apparently they announced fucking Daniel Bryan was off the Survivor Series uh, tag, uh, you know, tag match based on this match with Jeff, uh, AJ Styles. Which was, you know, it's fine that they do that, but like where there was no explanation for it, it wasn't like, you know, you know, an offering, you know, like, hey, you know, Daniel Bryan, you, you know, by taking this match, you know, they had no explanation whatsoever, which is like always oh, off. So it kind of like it was a lot of foreshadowing in regards to how the, the show was going to end. You didn't know exact, exactly how it was going to end, but like no one, I think, really predicted exactly how it was going in, but you kind of figure that, you know, okay, okay, tonight's the night, something's happening. So uh, again, so that ended up with the Miz. With, uh, you know, Samojo and Rey Mysterio basically saying that, hey, okay, well, Rey Mysterio, you know, you were Daniel Bryan's choice, so you're fucking off team fucking Survivor Series, which I kind of get that, I guess. That was some decent log- logic there. But ultimately, uh, Paige forced uh, The Miz to take on Rey Mysterio, and if uh, The Miz won, then fucking Mysterio was off the off the Survivor Series team, which obviously Mysterio won. Uh, this is a fun match, dude. Again, dude, I'm a, I'm, I'm, dude, huge fan right now of fucking Rey Mysterio's comeback, dude. His comeback has been nothing but fucking greatness. Like, his good fucking matches. He's in best shape of his fucking life. Like, dude, I'm, I, I, you know, <laughs> dude, it's great to fucking just see him, dude. It's great to see him back and, like, working at a high level, you know? Working at a very, the high, like, the highest level, I would say, in the last fucking you know, at least 10 years of his career, dude, like, the last, like, I would, yeah, d- dude, even longer, probably, uh, 13, 14 years, dude, I would say so, but this is a fun match, ultimately, ultimately, Mysterio wins, and ultimately, this led to Randy Orton trying to get the fucking RKO on Mysterio again, um, which, unfortunately, you know, Myster- Mysterio got out of the way, and we saw, uh, the Miz eat a fucking rko for his fucking you know for his comings and goings there so uh this is probably gonna lead obviously to Rey mysterio uh and some sort of feud with randy orton coming out of the survivor series which i'm okay with that i'm okay with that it's kind of funny seeing randy orton you know he doesn't really have anything going into survivor series but it's fun to see that they're teasing the the Rey mysterio feud which i'm, I'm okay with seeing that dude I'm, I'm i'm looking forward to that um so yeah then we did move on to becky lynch choosing charlotte flair to represent her at the survivor series um, I don't know if I really needed to see uh, the, the hug there, but I guess it was all right. I don't know. I don't know. I think a lot of people were bitching about that. You know, did we really did it really need to happen? I think it's just kind of one of those small things. That it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter in the long run. Oh, because eventually, it's essentially, it just you know ends the fucking uh, the whole thing here. And you know, going back to our whole you know uh, talk about you know Becky Lynch and Ronda Rousey going to fucking uh, WrestleMania 35 here. Uh, which the long rumored uh, match was going to be Charlotte taking on Ronda Rousey, but I think now they got to change that fucking hot hand, and now we're going to see Charlotte taking on Ronda Rousey now at Survivor Series, which I'm dude, I'm I'm looking forward to that match too. Not as much as I, you know, obviously the Becky Lynch fucking Ronda Rousey one, but I'm still looking forward to Charlotte taking on Ronda Rousey. I think it will be a fun match this coming Sunday, but you know, which apparently legitimately the Ronda Rousey Survivor Ronda Rousey versus Becky Lynch uh, Survivor Series match. Uh, was supposed to have main event. Like, there was rumors that that was supposed to main event. So that's crazy. But you get anything could have happened between then and Sunday, but that that's at least the rumor rumor out there, motherfuckers. Uh, we saw the New Day taking on the bar in the big show. Uh, this is another, you know, solid match, dude. Like, it's good to see, you know, the bar in the show. The bar and the show. Um, they ultimately did defeat New Day here. Um, I think this is just kind of filling up TV time, and, you know, they've been having a pretty... Another fun run of uh, seeing these guys go back and forth here. I mean, you know, it's like the you could the bar, New Day, Usos. Those are like your top tag teams in WWE, man. And like you know, they do it well, dude. They do it well, even though, um, yeah, I don't know, man. Maybe you know, at least like right now, like I, you know, kind of looking at the New Day. I don't necessarily have like too much of a problem with them. I guess I don't know. It is what it is. So you know, whatever. What the fuck ever, guys. Uh, in the main event of SmackDown, we did see AJ Styles taking on Daniel Bryan for the WWE Championship. Uh, this was an amazing match, guys. And the the heel turn was done very well as well. We saw Daniel Bryan ultimately get the, the low blow on AJ Styles and then ultimately kind of realize, like, oh my gosh, the power, the power I was just given uh, by this nut shot. And he fucking just beats the shit out of AJ Styles. Pins him. One, two, three. New WWE Champion. And then the fucking beatdown after, 
afterwards was amazing guys and now we have a new main event going into uh survivor series this coming saturday ladies and gentlemen so uh it's 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 pretty fucking intense in regards to you know what they pulled off here just this past uh tuesday night and the the swerve that we have now in regards to uh survivor series and whatnot so um guys i'm pretty fucking excited for survivor series you know ending uh monday night smackdown this this last uh excuse me uh this last um tuesday and shit and i'm trying to pull up fucking result you know information i'm trying to shit that i should have done uh before the fucking show i was like oh yeah that's right we got fucking uh we got uh, other shows that we're doing this weekend um so uh sorry nxt war games la wiki that's what we're trying to write and it's like it's hard to do that when you're talking man um so nonetheless though i'm i'm, I'm pretty excited here guys and we'll go down the card here in a moment uh, but to kind of break up the WWE, WWE monotony this week, guys, you know, we definitely um, watched Ring of Honor here today. I, I watched it a couple days late, but I did watch it here. I was able to watch Ring of Honor television today. Uh, we kicked off with the uh, world television champion Jeff Cobb taking on Shane Taylor in a non-title match. Dude, this is a hot fucking match, dude. Uh, Jeff Cobb ultimately won in seven minutes and nine seconds, but the very beginning, they were just butting at each other, dude, and the crowd is just getting into it. It's like, fuck, you feel that energy, man. It's just Jeff Cobb's fucking the man, dude. I'm kind of coming around on Shane Taylor, actually. I see him fucking like every other fucking week on Ring of Honor television. I, you know, I'm starting to respect the dude and enjoy enjoyed seeing him um at the end of the the match there we ultimately did see hangman adam page uh walk down to the ring there um basically getting in fucking Cobb's face they both uh security guards came out to kind of get in between them but then ultimately fucking Cobb and fucking hangman fucking just beat the shit out of him really quick um yeah dude this is uh this is i would assume this is going towards um this is moving towards, uh, you know, uh, Ring of Honor Final Battle. I think it's Final Battle that's coming up in December, um, which uh, I'm hearing all these fucking announcements, you know, and again, I'm not hearing them on TV. It's just like, I guess I guess I'm kind of figuring out the way they operate with Ring of Honor. It's like, you got to get the subscription to fucking, uh, you know, their fucking on-demand service. And you got to watch, like, they did the Global Wars tour last weekend. So it's like they did Toronto, Buffalo, and, like, whatever else, like, one other city or some shit. And, like apparently i would assume you're watching the shows on there so those are like your more of your live more of your annual live shows so you get a little bit more up-to-date real-time storyline information regarding shit than you do from these uh these tv tapings that they're doing like you know a month ago <laughs> but nonetheless you know if we're seeing it on over the air tv and like i said i watch it off i just watch it off their their app and stuff which man it's like you know i'm already like I don't know. It's like you got to pick and choose, dude. It's like I guess I have thirty bucks. I could just throw down on some Ring of Honor and fucking New Japan because it'd be nice to start covering New Japan. Because I think like you know once we get there to Wrestle Kingdom this year, I'm sh- I'm pretty sure I'll I'll spring the ten bucks and I'll get Wrestle Kingdom and we'll fucking watch that. We'll definitely have a a review up for fucking Wrestle Kingdom this year for sure. Uh, but yeah, with Adam Page leaving, uh, Cobb just destroyed one of the security guards. So I'm looking forward to that, dude. I think that'll be a solid fucking program. Um, I don't think Jeff Cobb needs to lose the title just yet, but I definitely wouldn't mind seeing Hangman Page take the title either. Um, so we did see Jeff J. Lethal backstage uh, giving a promo, uh, talking shit to Kenny King, because again they were leading up to the Global Wars tour last weekend. So they, I know that J. Lethal took on Kenny King um, in a world title match, which I assume J. Lethal won. They did not fucking see this. Then um, they basically teased the the mystery partner for him in um, fucking Gresham. Uh, later on for the main event uh, we did see the bouncers in action here uh, we did actually see a backstage promo with them prior um so basically brian uh malone has sent a warning to cheeseburger and eli Isom. Isom, i think that's the, how you pronounce the same uh but basically he was uh, he was talking all this shit but the beer city bruiser wasn't paying any fucking attention to it so we ultimately did see another promo from Marty Skrull. Uh, apparently, we're going to be seeing him taking on Shane Hurricane Helms uh, here very shortly. I believe that's actually hyped for next week. Um, yeah, cool, man. I, I don't, I don't mind the storyline between Skrull and fucking you know Shane Helms. It's superhero. It's the good guy, but you know, superhero versus supervillain. So it's definitely fun seeing him. Um, you know, then ultimately uh, we saw Cheeseburger taking on and Eli Isom taking on fucking uh, the bouncers, which is Beer City Bruiser and Brian Milanis. 
Uh, this is a pretty fun match, you know. I, I I don't mind seeing Cheeseburger. I think he's pretty fun in the ring, and that Eastman guy is pretty good too. So it's a fun match. It's a fun little TV match, and if you caught it this week, it was uh it's decent. Uh, probably like the, the definitely leading up to the better end of the the hour. Uh, we did see SoCal uncensored in the ring, basically coming out addressing the crowd and shit. Uh, Christopher Daniels kind of cut cut the meat of the pota- meat and pota- put the put out the meat and potatoes of the fucking uh, promo, uh, more or less saying that you know the addiction guarantees their victory next week because they're going to be taking on the Briscoes and the Young Bucks uh, for the Ring of Honor Tag Team Championships and basically guaranteeing that hey if we don't win next week we're done. But they guaranteed their victory, so they're going to go ahead and we already know they fucking won. I mean again like I addressed it last week, I already saw the fucking I saw a fucking Kazarian with pictures of him in the tag tiles. Like you know given that it's not like they're they're fucking out there parading it too much but it's just like you know eh, whatever dude what the fuck ever but you know it's a very it was a very good promo by SCU I think SCU is definitely one of their uh you know more popular fucking acts within ring of honor so definitely not going anywhere i would assume unless they're going to nxt or some shit but you never know you never know what's gonna fucking happen guys um but yeah as the scu was taking off fucking the briscoes appeared and just beat the shit out of fucking christopher daniels dude ultimately like fucking pile driving his ass on the fucking uh the ramp and shit dude so the briscoes are bitches dude i don't like the fucking briscoes dude so fuck them dude i'm glad they fucking lose the tag titles next week (laughs) so ring of honor world champion jay lethal Jonathan Gresham and Dalton Castle, the returning Dalton Castle, I should say, is that was the mystery partner took on the kingdom, which again, if we're going to talk spoilers, um, it was already spoiled to me that the uh, final battle this year, it's going to be fucking Jay Lethal defending the Ring of Honor World Championship against fucking Cody Rhodes. So like, I thought this whole, I guess this whole thing leading up with uh, Matt Ta- uh, Taven and fucking Jay Lethal is for nothing. I don't know. The, the fucking kingdom ended up fucking losing in 12 minutes and 40 seconds to Lethal Castle and fucking Gresham. It was a fun tag match. I enjoyed this fucking, I thought this was a really fun fucking main event. Shit, it was definitely one of the better ones I've seen on Ring of Honor television. Um, it, you know, I mean, I don't know, man. It's, it's very fucking delayed, uh, taping schedule and it's just, it kind of like, you don't know. I mean, if you're just that kid, you know, like I was, you know, back in the day, you know, if I'm that six year old fucking seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 11 year old kid flipping, Oh shit, I don't have access to the internet maybe. And like, this is the only thing I'm getting for ring of honor. The representation in regards to shit is kind of fucking lame, dude. Like you're not really building up to anything, dude. They're always fucking, you know, like, I don't know, dude, it just kind of fucking sucks, dude. Like I said, like the day after their pay-per-views, they're that you know instead of having like you know the very the thing that was recorded you know right after the pay-per-view airing on tv that next week it's like something that was shot before the fucking pay-per-view it's like i don't understand it i don't fucking understand it and again i guess that's why they're trying to get you to fucking buy the fucking you know the the on-demand shit which you know i guess any wrestling fan that truly is a wrestling fan is going to seek out shit on the internet anyway so it's a it's a lot different time i suppose compared to when i was a fucking kid and like all you were watching is tv you didn't have the internet and like you didn't have like the capability of what you have now so it is what it is but what the fuck ever guys it was a fun it was a fun uh edition of ring of honor television so if you saw it this week definitely um it was it was fun it was fun so we did see uh, NXT this week. This is the go home show to uh, War Games that is taking place this coming Saturday, which we will definitely have a review for that. Um, I'm gonna try to fucking get it done that night and have that guys for you Sunday morning. But um, if not, maybe Saturday night we'll definitely have that shit up. So uh, we saw NXT kick off with Mia Yim taking on Bianca Belair. Uh, this was definitely um, I like Bianca Del Belair. I was actually surprised that Bianca won. But I guess she is being billed as undefeated, so I guess that would make sense that Mia Yim. I felt that Mia Yim was a little bit more, you know, more important in the the pecking order in regards to the women's division, but I was proven wrong. Bianca Belair picked up the fucking win. Definitely um, not necessarily. I mean, it's an average TV match, so I'm not going to say too much more. Um, we also, we, we saw a lot of fucking videos this week hyping up the card for NXT, which I'm not necessarily going to cover those right now because we're going to go over the card here momentarily, which is only four matches. But we saw a lot of like just a lot of videos and shit in between the matches. We only saw three matches, which is pretty average. Uh, we did see Lacey Evans finally in action, which they've been building her up with the uh, you know the back the the vagina, vagina I always say like vagina it's like vagina vagina virginities I don't know whatever dude 
vignettes, <laughs> fucking a whatever. Um, we saw uh, with L- Lacey Evans here the last couple of weeks. We've been seeing those videos um, off and on. So it's good to see Lacey Evans. I really like the intensity. I think she's fucking definitely the, you know is an up and comer in regards to the NXT Women's Division. So I definitely say keep your eyes out for Lacey Evans if you're not watching NXT on the reg. Um, so she took on Carissa Riviera. Um, I like that chick too. I thought she was pretty cool, man. You know, obviously she's just, you know, there to job out, but I thought she looked good in the ring. So it was fun. It was fun seeing that. And our main event of NXT television this week, we saw, uh, Hanson taking on Kyle O'Reilly. And this is obviously to give out who's going to have the numbers advantage, uh, come war games on Saturday. Uh, this is the, you know, between, I would say obviously your AJ Styles, Daniel Bryan, it's probably match of the week, but this gives it uh, definitely it's um it's up there, dude. I, I definitely thought it was a very solid effort from both men. Um, you know, definitely this brought out all the teams and whatnot. Late into the match, we saw Roe, Ricochet, uh, Pete Dunne, Roderick Strong, Bobby Fish, and Cole all pair off um, and you know kicking the shit out of each other. Um, Ricochet delivered a dive that basically wiped everyone fucking out. Um, Basically, with the distraction though, Kyle O'Reilly was able to hit the hit a shot at Hanson uh, with the tag belt to basically score the win. So fucking, you know, undisputed error obviously is fucking cheating. So it was a good match. It was a good fucking main event. So the fucking undisputed error gets the numbers game, uh, advantage in regards to War Games this coming Saturday, which will go in and transition to the fucking uh, setup for this. Um, this is going to be a, a, a pretty good fucking show, guys. I, it's only four matches. It's probably going to at least go two and a half hours. Um, I'm, dude, I'm like 100% looking forward to this shit, dude. Uh, it's going to be awesome. We're going to be seeing, I know, it's like, Kevin Porter, why are you, sl- why are you slowing down now? Why are you slowing down? <laughs> fucking, uh, I pulled up the War Games wiki like I was talking about earlier, but I pulled up last year. So I was like, oh, Ruby Riot's on that shit? Oh, oh no. So we're going to see the singles match for the NXT Championship with no mention of Lars um, you know, Sullivan or anything. Uh, Tommaso Ciampa is going to be taking on Velveteen Dream. I think this is going to be a fun match. Um, I don't think Velveteen Dream is going to win this match on Saturday, but you know, um, I wouldn't be surprised if he did. But I think they yeah, got so much more uh, with Champa going forward that I don't. I think this is just kind of just one of those, you know, this is just the defense for Champa, and I, I think Champa will go over. Uh, we are going to see Aleister Black taking on Johnny Gargano in a fucking basically a grudge match, more or less. Um, I think Aleister Black's going to get the win, but I wouldn't be surprised if they let Johnny Gargano pick up the win as well because it's like oh. You know, maybe they're going to prolong this feud and take it to the Royal Rumble weekend. You know, NXT, uh, I guess it would be Phoenix or whatever, uh, take over Phoenix. But, yeah, so we're going to see a uh, pretty good fucking match there. I think it's going to be awesome. Like, you know, for as much shit as I talk about Aleister Black, you know, fucking Satanist, uh, I enjoy his matches, you know, at least to the point where he's really good in the ring because uh, he sold the soul to the devil so <laughs> motherfucker oh johnny gargano man I, you know i'm gonna go on a limb dude i'm gonna call for johnny gargano to win this fucking match here and, and continue this feud but i wouldn't be surprised if alexander black just you know destroyed him uh we are also gonna see Shayna blazer uh baszler take on carrie sane in a two out of three falls match for the nxt women's championship i love two out of three falls matches so uh, i expect a uh, pretty fucking awesome outing between Shayna baszler and carrie sane i wouldn't be oh wait the other, the other two chicks aren't fucking there uh aren't gonna allow to ringside i don't think i think they're banned or whatever so it's gonna be a fun show guys that's gonna be it's gonna be fun um, I, I, and I don't think Shayna Baszler is going to lose. I don't think Kerry Sane is going to win it back. So we'll see where that goes, man. Uh, we're going to see the undisputed era, Adam Cole, Bobby Fish, Kyle O'Reilly, Roderick Strong, taking on Pete Dunn, Ricochet, War Raiders, Hanson and Rowe in war games, motherfucker. They've done a really good job building this up, man. I'd say this whole entire card was really well built. Um, all these feuds matter. All these matches matter. Um, I think undisputed is going to win. I think they're that heel faction. They need that, you know, just, they're, they're the horsemen, dude. They're the fucking horsemen. They're going to win, dude. It's going to be an awesome match, and I'm really looking forward to Saturday, actually. I'm looking forward to Saturday maybe a little bit more than I am Survivor Series, and that's always the case. NXT is always a way better fucking show. Uh, we roll into Survivor Series, the six-hour fucking extravaganza, including two matches I assume are going to be on the kickoff show. Uh, we're going to definitely be seeing on the pre-show the tag team uh, versus the tag team elimination match. This is like... 20 fucking people in this shit i don't fucking know dude i don't too much going on and i'm not gonna watch it guys but i assume maybe team 
We'll go with Team SmackDown on this one. I think Team SmackDown's going to fucking pull this shit out. And, you know, come Sunday, guys, I don't remember these picks either. I, I say this shit. I record this shit on a Thursday night, motherfuckers. Like, I don't fucking remember shit come Sunday. So uh, we're definitely going to be seeing um, Buddy Murphy taking on Mustafa Ali for the singles, you know, the, the, the Cruiserweight Championship. Buddy Murphy's not going to lose this match. Uh, Mustafa Ali needs to shave his fucking mustache. Dude, that dude looks fucking creepy. Uh, we're going to see AOP taking on the bar, um, a champion versus champion match here. I think AOP is going to take it only in the sense that, you know, they need the win, uh, more than the bar does. I think you can have shenanigans in this shit. And I think AOP needs to keep getting uh, bigger and bigger in regards to, um, strengthening up their, uh, their look in regards to the wins. I guess they just need to get wins, motherfucker. Give them the win wwe <laughs> we're gonna so we're also gonna see um Ron, oh, let's see here uh seth rollins taking on shinsuke nakamura for the united states championship i expect a pretty fun match out of this um and i would say maybe this could be match of the night but we'll see we'll see what happens here um ultimately i think shinsuke is gonna take it i think dean's gonna get fucking involved it's kind of predictable in a sense but maybe not maybe maybe not i don't know shinsuke nakamura i think will pick up the win though and we're gonna see team raw which consists of Dolph Ziggler, Drew McIntyre, Braun Strowman, Finn Balor, and Bobby Lashley, which I, apparently we didn't mention that Finn Balor's on the team, um, taking on with Baron Corbin and Leo Rush, uh, taking on The Miz, Team SmackDown, which is t- uh, The Miz, Shane McMahon, Rey Mysterio, Samojo, and Jeff Hardy. Uh, this should be a fun match, man. I, for the most part, I like all the fucking people in this. Um, I don't know. I think maybe Team Raw's going to win because Braun's going to get that universal title if you know team raw wins so you know ultimately i mean that doesn't fucking matter because they'll still give them the fucking match anyway but i i think team raw is probably going to pull off the win here um we're going to see ronda rousey taking on charlotte flair uh what would have been the main event of the night ronda rousey taking on becky lynch still going to be a fun match here uh i don't know who's going to win i think ronda rousey's probably going to pull off the win i don't see any reason for charlotte flair i mean we may see nia Jax get involved in this shit um which she is on Team Raw, which we didn't discuss the Team Raw women's match. Mickey James, Nia Jax, Tamina, Natalia, and Ruby Riot taking on fucking Carmella, Naomi, Sonya Deville, Asuka, and a t- to be determined uh, point, uh, person, which could be Nikki Cross. I mean, she just fucking debuted on SmackDown here a couple weeks ago. Um, yeah, dude, straight up, dude. I mean, that's your fucking Survivor Series, man. I mean, four hours, dude. Plus, you're going to see Brock Lesnar taking on Daniel Bryan. And that's just, I mean, I hope that's going to be your match of the night there. And I'm not going to sit here and break down all this shit. We're going to see this shit. We're all going to see this shit on fucking Saturday and Sunday, guys. Uh, We're going to have a fucking uh, review show for Survivor Series and NXT, which I guarantee will not be as fucking long. Either one of them will (laughs) be as long as what we throw out on a weekly basis. We try to keep those things uh, short and to the point, I suppose. Uh, But yeah, dude, I just want to thank you guys for fucking listening, man. If you're at the end of this podcast and you're still listening, thank you. And we will see you guys fucking Saturday for NXT War Games. We're out, bitches!